What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video and we gotta talk about what happened on this episode of SmackDown. Now we know they were gonna continue on the first round of the tournament to see who's gonna be in the King of the Ring tournament, uh, PLE, the King and Queens, uh, Queens, uh, King of the Ring tournament, PLE, that's uh, coming up within the next few weeks. So they had some interesting matchups and lineups but they started off the show with a very unexpected surprise. So, Nick Aldis is in the middle of the ring and he brings out Cody Rhodes. And basically their business that's being had is to find out who's going to be Cody Rhodes' next opponent for uh, their next PLE, which is King and Queen of the Ring. And, you know, there's, there's speculation, you know, of other people that you know would have made sense potentially i know a lot of people including myself was thinking maybe they run it back with aj styles but he was actually in the tournament tonight uh in the first round going against randy orton so initially i'm thinking maybe it's you know they were gonna run it back but it seems as if what when nick aldis presented the idea that it was gonna be somebody new so i'm like, all right cool what's gonna happen here you hear logan's paul music hit and i instantly was like what i was so confused but then i realized we're going to saudi as soon as i realized that now i know why that happened am i one of the people that think it should have happened no but it makes sense that it's happening for monetary reasons the same thing that happened with roman reigns and logan paul when logan paul was given a title opportunity a lot of people felt some type of way like damn that's too soon to be going at you know at the top champion but it was for money reasons that's why that happened and more or less this is the same situation here you know it's just now cody's the champion and when it comes to them saudi shows they want particular they want certain matches that doesn't really make sense with the continuity of how everything else been booked on the show but they don't give a damn they want potentially certain matches that if they're on the table to be offered and logan paul is one of them do i think this match will be fucking great yes because the match that logan and roman had was really damn good he showed out so i think this match will be more or less the same but it seems as if this match is gonna be title versus title winner takes all because when logan paul was kind of giving his you know his side of things he was basically saying like you know i'm the longest reigning champion right now in wwe which he is and right now you know i'm trying to win the wwe undisputed championship and cody was like you know what i never you know you know, I've never won the United States Championship. If I win the United States Championship, I will become a Grand Slam champion. And I'm like, hmm. Now, they didn't outwardly say that it's title versus title, but it doesn't make sense for them to, one, say this in both of their promos to each other for it to not be the case. There's no point of having Logan Paul versus Cody Rhodes and the titles are not on the line. That makes absolute no sense. There's no point of doing that. It's a waste of time. You might as well put the titles on the line, and I think that's what's going to happen. Even later in the show, Cody tweeted out Cody two belts. I'm like, yo, what is this? <laughs> Once again, I know how some people will be like, well, oh, Logan doesn't need that opportunity. It could have been somebody else. It could have. But we know why they're doing this. It's, it's for the Saudi show. And I think it's going to be a great match. Now, the question becomes... Logan's not winning. So there's two options. You either have Logan lose, which I would be very surprised in the sense of having him drop the title and Cody actually being the undisputed WWE champion and the United States champion at the same time. That's fucking wild. So he would literally have two belts. Or, or this match ends up in a, a screwy finish. There's going to be some type of disqualification. Do I want it to be a disqualification in such a, a, a big type match like this? No, but that's the only way you can keep Logan Paul as champion and have Cody not lose. Because Cody's not losing anytime soon. I don't, I don't want y'all to, if y'all think Cody's going to fucking lose anytime soon, you don't know wrestling. He's not losing anytime soon. 
So, and I don't see Logan you losing yet. I, I more prefer Logan losing at SummerSlam, hopefully to a LA night for the United States Championship. I think that would probably be a better situation than to have him lose here. Um, so I do think it's going to be a DQ finish. Now, I know there was a situation where, where AJ Styles, right after the segment, was being interviewed. And he was like, yeah, everyone know I had Cody beat or whatnot, but that's okay. Because I'm going to be in a King of the Ring tournament. And when I win it, I'm going to earn my opportunity. And when next time I face Cody Rhodes, I'm going to beat him. He can't beat me. He, he, he won't be able to beat me again. I'm going to win. So maybe since uh, AJ Styles did get eliminated out the first round by Randy Orton, maybe AJ goes unhinged and he causes a disqualification. That's the only thing I can think of, bro. The only thing I can think of is going to have to be a DQ because there's no way, no way I see Cody winning. Not because he can't beat Logan, but for the title, that shit would be insanity. Now, if they do pull the trigger on that, I do ultimately think Cody's going to drop the belt, the United States Championship, because he's not losing anytime soon. So I, I don't know. This is this is a very interesting one. Y'all let me know. How y'all feel about that? Would y'all be okay with Cody Rhodes being a two-belt champion? Would y'all? How would y'all feel about that? Y'all let me know down below, because I that, that's the only outcome. It's either Cody wins or... It's a disqualification and nobody fucking wins. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. But also, we got to talk about the bloodline stuff. So uh, I didn't even notice. I didn't even realize this or wasn't paying attention. Um, Tamatonga is actually in the tournament. And there was a situation before we get right into the bloodline stuff. It involves them. Uh, Byron Saxon, I believe, was interviewing Randy Orton. And Randy Orton talking about being in the tournament and all this other stuff when he getting in the ring. But he got a little serious when he talked about how uh, Tonga Loa took out uh, Kevin Owens at Backlash, his partner. And he said he hopes to face uh, uh, Tama, uh, Tama Tonga. He hopes to face him at, uh, at some point in his tournament because he's going to make sure he sees it coming with the RKO. Like, he's like, he's going to make sure he goes to that dark place. Uh, hear voices in his head again. I like that. They're building up some type of rivalry with Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, and the bloodline. So, I like that. The intensity. Foreshadowing there to, for whenever they potentially do meet up in a tournament. It's going to be some chaos. Um, But, yeah, I didn't know initially that uh, Tama Tonga was in the tournament. First round, but we go to the backstage area in the Bloodline Rocking Room, whatnot, and you see Paul Heyman, uh, Solo Sokoa, Tama Tonga getting ready, and Tonga Loa, and Paul's scared. He's just terrified, and and Paul's over here like, yo, you you, you got to be, what are you doing? You, you, you can't be doing these things. Like, you're not the, the tribal chief, and that's when Solo is like, hey, hey. Like what 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 are you doing here? Like he, he was frustrated. He's like, this is coming from the guy that lied to us about Roman Reigns not being a part of the draft. We should have been drafted first, but we ended up being drafted third or something that he said to that effect. Like, this is coming from you, or you know, like, you trying to take family, you trying to take food off my family, like you you trying to stop my bread. From, you know what I'm saying? You trying to stop me from feeding my kids? Kind of sounding like a tribal chief, what Romans said in the past. Like, you trying to take uh, the food off my plate for my kids, for my family? Like, something similar. Solo also brought up the fact, and I like the way he worded this particular situation. He said, after, the, after Roman Reigns lost our championship, our title at WrestleMania, things had to change. He also mentioned you haven't even talked to Roman Reigns. Now, you haven't said nothing to him, but guess what? I have. And Paul Heyman has a shocked look on his face like, what? You've talked to Roman Reigns? Yes, I, I've talked to him, and he personally told me until he comes back, I am running the bloodline, which means you are my wise man. And then he decides to hug Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman scared, confused, and shocked. And Solo Sokoa just has this smug look like this is his position. This is where he belongs. And he quote-unquote talked to Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns said he is the tribal chief until he returns. Which 
I think a lot of us in the chat when we was watching this, we call bullshit. Now we call that, that's that's some cap right there. He he got a fresh dope the dose of the caparade because I don't know about that. I don't know how true it is that Roman actually spoke to him. That's why Paul was so shocked. I'm like, I don't know about that. There may be some other things going on behind the scenes. Maybe The Rock told him to say that. Who knows? But I like what they're doing here. Solo has now stepped into his own. He is running the bloodline. And he says Roman Reigns gave him the blessing. But how true is that? So this is going to be very interesting to see how this all plays. I love what they're doing with the bloodline stuff. We're still not sure who really pulls the strings. But as of now, Solo Sokoa says he's the one pulling the strings. So... We will see. And Solo Sokoa says he is the tribal chief as of right now. Because Roman gave his blessings. Who knows? But, hey, man, this is very interesting. Uh, that's a pretty solid show. A pretty solid uh, SmackDown. I'm really intrigued to see what they're going to do with this Logan versus Cody Rhodes title versus title match, essentially, or winner takes all. Either way, this match is going to be fucking great. Logan has not missed <laughs> since he's been on WWE. Cody doesn't miss. I think this is going to be a really good match. I do. I am all for it. It doesn't really make a lick of sense. I understand other people probably deserve it better, but it's them Saudi shows, man. They kind of want what they want, and WWE tries to, you know, give them exactly what they want, and I think this is a match they want. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So, y'all let me know down below what y'all think about this whole Cody versus Logan match? Are you guys excited about it? Who would you have win? Do you see Cody being a two-belt champion? <laughs> Let me know. Will he be the WWE Undisputed and United States champ at the same time? Y'all let me know if y'all want to see that. Also, do y'all believe Solo Sokoa talked to Roman Reigns? And Roman Reigns gave him his blessing to be the tribal chief. Do y'all really believe that? Y'all let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love, support, road to 50 k And I'm still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.